Hi, my name is Donna and this is Malibu, my bear band parakeet, also known as a superb parrot. I have 16 species of birds. Yes, 16 species. So in today's video, I wanted to do uh, pros and cons of each species. Now just remember, all birds require a proper diet, proper housing, proper attention, proper enrichment, and proper vet care by an avian vet. And they all need out of cage time. Uh, gone are the days where you get a bird, you buy a small cage with one perch, and you stick it in there for its life, and you feed it seed and water. Don't do that. That's not really ideal for a bird. That's, that's actually very cruel. So uh, birds are very complex creatures, and um, caring for birds have really improved over the years, and it's still improving. Always, you should always be learning about birds like you are now watching my channel. That's why I like to share videos so that you can learn what I have learned. I'm constantly reading about birds, learning about birds. I love birds and I want to improve their life all the time. So in this video, you can see the pros and cons of each of my species and you can decide which bird might be good for you. And check out my uh, playlist of my uh, species uh, spotlight profiles of each of my species. I don't have all of them there, but most of them are there. I'll be doing some in the future. So if you're interested in a certain bird, you can go look at that video because I go into detail of each uh, bird. But today I'm just going to be doing just a few cons and a few pros. So I hope you enjoy. If you have anything to add about any species, put it down below in the comments and so that we can all learn. All right, let's get started. Cons of a canary. They are prone to air sac mites, red mites, and canary baldness. They are shy of humans, and generally they are a hands-off bird unless hand-raised. They have a short lifespan of between eight to 10 years. Males can fight with each other, especially if you kept them in a cage. In an aviary setting, it's much better, but they will fight during the breeding season. Some canaries can sing constantly all day long and loud, such as the Spanish timbrado. Pros of the canary, they are small, cute, they don't bite, some of them sing beautifully, some can be hand tame, especially if hand raised, they're not demanding. They come in three types of canaries, a song, color and type canaries, and many varieties within each group. They are inexpensive to buy or adopt and readily available. Cons of a Java Finch. They are hands-off, timid, and shy of humans unless they are hand-raised. It's best to keep in groups or pairs unless you have a hand-fed, friendly Java Finch that you can spend plenty of time with. They are very energetic and they need a very large flight cage or out-of-the-cage free flight time. Males may fight each other, especially if kept in a small area. Pros of a Java Sparrow, they are small, cute, hardy species. They're very affordable. They don't bite. They're quiet. They have a pleasant sound. They come in various color mutations. They can mix well with other species of birds. And if hand tamed, they make wonderful little loving, cuddly little pet birds. The Java Finch is suited for apartments or for anyone who doesn't like a lot of noise. They are very quiet and have a pleasant song. Cons of a budgie. They constantly make noise. They're always chirping and singing. They have a short lifespan averaging 8 to 10 years. They are prone to iodine deficiencies, liver disease, fatty tumors, and scaly face mites. Budgies can be nippy, especially the females. They are very active and energetic little birds and always on the go. Pros of a budgie. Well, they are small, they're cute, they're loving, they crave attention, they're affectionate, playful, and trainable. They can learn many tricks. They have the ability to talk and mimic sounds. They come in a variety of colors and two sizes, the English budgie and the regular size budgie. They are affordable to buy or adopt and they are apartment friendly. They can live in flocks or you can have a pair of budgies or just one if you have plenty of time to spend with your budgie. 
Budgies are one of the most popular pet birds in the world, so you can't go wrong with the budgie, and they are very easy to tame. Cons of a cockatiel. Cockatiels are very dusty birds, so they're not suitable if you have allergies, or if you'd like to keep a clean house, as their dust will be everywhere, all over the furniture, all over the floors and the walls. Cockatiels are prone to night frights, which means they easily spook or get unnerved in the darkness and the quiet of the night, and they will start to bash around in their cage. They can be very noisy, especially the males, and they can be very needy. Pros of a cockatiel. They are very nice family birds. They usually love everybody in the family. They are laid back, calm birds. They're very cute. They're very smart. They're very trainable. The males can learn to whistle many tunes. They love human interaction and some of them will like to be scratched on the head and sit on your shoulder for as long as you want. Females in general are quieter than the males, so you can't go wrong with the cockatiel. They are very, very beautiful, friendly birds. Cons of the Bork Parakeet. They are very fragile. They stress easy. They don't like to cuddle. They don't like to be touched. They are shy and very wary of humans unless they are hand fed and tame. They need lots of flying space, a large fly cage or out of the cage, time where they can fly for hours at a time. It's best that they are in pairs or groups. Pros of the Borks Parakeet. They are very sweet and gentle, mellow, quiet, calm. They don't scream. They don't even bite. They can entertain themselves. They're not dusty and they're not very demanding. They can mix well with other species of birds and if hand raised, they can make a very nice pet. They are apartment friendly or for someone who doesn't like a lot of noise or a bird screaming all day, has their sound is very pleasant. They are very rare birds in the pet trade, so they may be very hard to find, but they are worth it once you have one. Cons of the turquoisine parakeet. They're very shy of hands or humans unless hand raised, but once hand raised, you gotta work with them or otherwise they become uh, wild again and they don't want any human interaction. They'll spend time, but they'll just kind of hang around and won't step up or come to you. They're very fragile and stress easy, similar to the Bork's parakeet. It's best that they are in groups or pairs unless you have a hand tame, friendly baby that you can spend a lot of time with. They need a lot of space to fly, so a large flight cage or a lot of time out of the cage. Pros of the turquoise and parakeet, well, they're beautiful, they're small, they're quiet, they don't bite, they're not demanding, they don't scream. They come in a variety of colors and can be very tame if hand raised. They are suited for apartments due to their quiet sounds. They are more on the rare side and hard to find, but once you get one, they are worth it. Cons of a linny. Well, for their size, they eat a lot of food. They're constantly eating and they have extremely large poops compared to other birds of similar size. They can have a very loud, constant call. They need constant nail trimmings as their nails curl when they grow. Otherwise, they'll get caught in toys and in the cage bars. They can be hand shy, even if hand raised. Some can be cage aggressive or only like one family member or one gender. They do best in pairs, even the same sex pairs. Pros of the Linny. Well, they're very cute and they're just a small little parrot. They can learn to talk or mimic. They come in a variety of colors. They can mix with other species of birds. They make these cute sounds when they're not doing their contact call. They just make these little warbling sounds. They're just adorable. They can be cuddly or affectionate. They are apartment friendly unless they make the contact call, which could be pretty loud. As long as you provide them with a lot of attention, a mate and a lot of toys, a lot of activity and enrichment, hopefully they shouldn't do the contact call. They can be hard to find, but once you've found one, they can make an ideal pet. 
The cons of a kakariki. While they're very, very active birds, they rarely stay still in one spot very long. They are very messy birds as they use their feet to scratch out all their food from the food dishes and it just gets all over the place. They're not cuddly and they generally don't like to be touched. They can be hand shy even if hand raised. They need constant nail trims as their nails grow really, really fast. They are prone to heart disease and many kakarikis only live till two, three, four, or five, and sometimes the average lifespan might be eight. I've heard so many stories of them just passing away at a very young age. Pros of a kakariki, well, they're so cute. They got a little head and a little round body that's like pear-shaped. They come in many color mutations. They are very funny, comical, and entertaining to watch as they're always on the go. They are good eaters and not picky at all. They can mix well with other species of birds. They are very quiet. They don't scream like other species of parrots would. Their sound is adorable. They almost sound like little goats. So I would say they're apartment friendly or for those of you who don't like a lot of noise and don't like a lot of, you know, birds screaming. And their sounds are adorable. They are more rare in the bird community, so they might be hard to find. But once you find one, they will make an awesome pet. Cons of a Sierra parakeet. These birds can be very bold. They're similar to the parallet. They're like a big parrot and a small body. They can be very territorial of their cage or of another bird. They can be very nippy. They need a huge flight cage or a lot of out of the time cage for flying. They don't do well with clipped wings. I don't recommend clipping any bird's wings, but I just thought I would mention this. They are very rare where I am anyways and can be very, very hard to find. Two males may fight or even try to kill each other. So it's best if you have a male and female or one has a pet. Pros of a Sierra parakeet. Well, they're very cute. They're small. They're about the size of a budgie. And they're very quiet. They don't scream. And their, their sounds are very cute. They're just like little warbling sounds similar to like a parallel. They're not destructive, as their beaks are so small. Their beaks are actually rounded at the end, so even if they bit you, you don't even feel it. They don't even draw blood, they just kind of pinch you. They mix well with other species. Mine loves my cockatiels, they get along very well with my other birds. They are apartment friendly, or for someone who doesn't like a loud bird, as they don't scream, they just make really small, cute little relaxing sounds. The Sierra Parakeet is a neat little bird to have in your family. As they like every member in the family, they're not really a bird that will like one member of the family. They like everybody. Cons of a lovebird. They can be aggressive with other birds. They can also be biters. And they can be very noisy. And they do need attention or crave attention. Lovebirds are prone to ear infections, yeast infections, vitamin A and calcium deficiencies. They are also prone to polyfollicolosis. It's when two or more feathers will grow out of the same follicle. It's very painful and your lovebird will bite or pull its feathers out. Pros of the lovebird. Well, they're really cute, they're small, they're playful, they're entertaining, and they're trainable. They can also learn to mimic some sounds and a few words. They are very friendly birds and they can like every family member. They have great personalities and love to be cuddled and petted and will sit on you, sit on your shoulder, on your head. A hand-raised lovebird would make an awesome pet. They're pretty common in the pet bird trade so they can be easily found. Cons of the lorikeet. Well, the lorikeet has a very different diet than other parrots. They have a liquid diet, which consists of nectar, pollen, and fruits. They also can eat some vegetables and a little bit of spray millet. Since they have a liquid diet, their poops are liquid, and they can shoot that poop pretty far when they're sitting in their cage. They can hit the walls and the floor, so your walls and floor will need some plastic protection. They are noisy birds and have a high-pitched tone with frequent squawks. Lorikeets are not ideal for apartments as they can be heard through the walls 
or if you're sensitive to loud noises. They are very active birds and they can be territorial with other birds and they don't interact well with other species of birds. They are prone to aspergillosis and iron storage disease. Pros of a lorikeet. Well, they're very beautiful, very colorful, and there are many types of lorikeets. They are funny, comical, and they are known as clowns of the bird world. They have the ability to learn how to talk or mimic sounds. They are attention seekers and love human interaction. They are not dusty birds and they keep clean by bathing daily. Lorikeets are excellent pets if you have plenty of time to play with them and you provide plenty of toys to keep their minds and beaks busy. They need a large flight cage and plenty of out of cage playtime. Cons of a Senegal Parrot Senegals are known to be a one person or one gender bird. They may attack other family members or anyone they don't like. They can be aggressive and very moody. They're not considered cuddly birds, but some might appreciate a pet on the head. They have a loud, high-pitched call. They can be expensive to buy or to adopt. They are prone to aspergillosis. They can be destructive and they need a lot of toys to chew, or they can chew your house down. The lifespan could be anywhere between 30 to 50 years. They don't mix well with other species of birds, so it's best to keep them separate. Pros of a Senegal Parrot Well, they're very small, compact parrots. They're very cute. They can be loving and playful, especially if they pick you as their partner. They are very intelligent, and they can learn some tricks. They have the ability to learn some words and to mimic some sounds. They are mostly quiet throughout the day. They like to do beeps, whistles, some clicks. They are suitable for apartments or if you don't like a lot of noise coming from a bird, they're generally quiet and hardly do the contact call. Cons of a plum-headed parakeet. They're not considered cuddly birds and don't like to be touched. They are flighty birds. They spook easily. They go through a bluffing stage when they are young, which means they bite and they're very aggressive and all that, but that all changes once that passes and they become sweet birds. They can be standoffish with strangers until they get to know them. They are very active birds, so they need a huge flight cage or an aviary or at least three hours out of the cage playtime. Pros of the plum-headed parakeet, while they are more quiet than other species such as the ringneck, they're less aggressive and less possessive than other species of birds. They get along with other species of birds. They are less demanding than other birds. They're gentle, they're social, they can be affectionate. They're very trainable. They can learn to speak and mimic sounds. They are good eaters and will eat anything that you offer them. They can be expensive to purchase or adopt as they're very rare in the bird community. They can make good apartment pets or for those of you who don't like a lot of noise as they're not very noisy like a ringneck or an alexandrian would be. Once they're fully colored, they're very beautiful birds. The males will have a bright purple head and the females will have more of a violet or gray colored head. But they're very striking birds and they're not as large as a ringneck or alexandrian. They're pretty, actually, they're pretty small. Cons of the mustache parakeet. Well, they can be very moody. They bite very hard. They can actually do some damage. And they love to chew. They can chew your house down. So wood must be provided or they will chew anything that they see. They can become a one-person bird or a one-gender bird and attack other family members. They can be very loud, especially their contact call. It can be ear-piercing. They go through a bluffing stage when they're young, but once that passes, they'll be a better pet. But during the buff bluffing stage, they will be very aggressive, moody, biting, won't listen to you. Um, it won't be a nice experience, but once it's passed, hopefully they'll be, be a better pet. They are not a cuddly bird and they don't like to be touched. Pros of a mustache parakeet. Well, they're very beautiful. They're an eye-catching species. They're so colorful and pretty. They are very intelligent and very trainable. They have the ability to learn how to talk and to mimic sounds. 
They can be expensive to purchase or to adopt as they're pretty rare in the bird community. If they pick you as your person, they can be an awesome pet. You'll be able to get them to step up, to sit with you, and you can play with them and train them. Cons of the Bearban Parakeet. They are not cuddly and they don't like to be touched. And they can be phobic at times. They are very flighty and very active. So they need a very large flight cage, Avery, or several hours out of the cage. Pros of the Bearban Parakeet. Well, they're very beautiful. They have a long slender tail. Their beaks are really small and they don't really bite. And if they were to bite, it's not going to hurt you. Has their, they don't have a lot of power in their beaks. It's very small. They'll just basically pinch you. You won't have to go get a bandage or go get stitches or anything like that. Parabans are on the quiet side. They do make noise, but it's not as loud as other species. And they have the ability to learn how to talk and to mimic sounds. They can mix well with other species. They can be expensive to purchase or to adopt as they're very rare in the bird community. If you want a gentle bird that's very active and entertaining to watch that you can interact with occasionally, then a Baraban parakeet might be for you. Cons of an Australian King Parrot. King Parrots can stress easily. They're not cuddly birds and they really don't like to be touched. They require a huge cage or aviary and at least three or four hours out of the cage for exercise and mental stimulation. Pros of the King Parrot. They're a very gentle bird. They don't even bite. Even when they try, their beak is so small it doesn't even hurt you. They just kind of tickle you. They're on the quiet side. They're very acrobatic. They can learn to talk and mimic sounds. They are very needy and they seek attention. They are not dusty birds and they don't even have an odor. If you want a fun loving bird, a king parrot might be the one for you. They are on the quieter side, but they do make a lot of noise and sometimes they can make noise all day. So I don't recommend them for apartment life or if you don't like a lot of noise. Ready? 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 Want to sing? Ready? Sing? I'm a green pickle. I'm a green pickle. Uh. Yes, good boy. I hope this video has helped you in deciding on which kind of bird that you would like to get in the future. Check out my video on the screen of my species spotlight videos. Each species I go into depth about those birds, so that will help you a lot more than today's video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.